Okay. This is the third installment for the lecture. Uh, we talked about convergent evolution and parallel evol evolution and divergent evolution. This is similar, but this is speciation, not just evolution. So this is the, pro the creation, I guess you should say, of a new species. And we do that two different ways. Uh, so down here at the bottom of this image, we have the original species, the common ancestor or whatever. This was a million years ago. So. Through the process of anagenesis, this original species evolves into this new species. So species one becomes or evolves into or whatever species two. And this is over the course of countless generations, okay? So it's not like this bird turns into this bird, but offspring and selection and all mutation, all of those things that we've talked about, a new bird evolves. This species one bird, the original bird, psh, no longer exists in anagenesis. It has evolved into this new species, okay? Now, that's anagenesis. Cladogenesis, there's a branching involved. So the way that I remember cladogenesis is when you make a cladogram, then you're drawing these branches. Well, cladogenesis, we have to have branching. So with cladogenesis, same original species, uh, and that species, as time passes, the original species continues to exist. But another species happens over here. So evolution, selection, maybe they fit into a new niche. Uh, this new species evolved out of the original species, but the original species still exists. Branching is cladogenesis, okay? So evolution branched off in cladogenesis. Evolution one replaced another in anagenesis. Okay, so this is the process of speciation. It happens one of two ways, really. These are the two ways. So I already mentioned once microevolution. Microevolution is evolution within a species. So the changes that happen uh, to organisms in a species over generations, but they don't become a new species in microevolution. So microevolution is happening in us constantly in our species. So sickle cell anemia, uh, blood type, the, the frequencies of different blood type alleles changing. Uh, all of this is microevolution. Macroevolution is on a much larger scale. It is evolution of a new species. That's macro, it's big. Uh, so macroevolution. And that's what most people think about when they think of evolution. But microevolution is still evolution. It's still allele frequencies that are changing. So those are the two types uh, of evolution, small within a species, big, a new species happens. And basically, a lot of the time this happens through adaptations, because adaptations are really important for natural selection. So these are those profitable traits. They allow for speciation. So most of the time, natural selection is happening. But remember, there are still things like gene flow and genetic drift that are not natural selection, but they are evolutionary mechanisms. So just keep those things in mind. So. Okay, we talked about anagenesis and we talked about cladogenesis. Now we have two different ways that we sort of talk about speciation. These are ways that new species are created, and this is basically based on geography, kind of. So with allopatric speciation, we have this image over here. Uh, geographic isolation, so this geographic isolation. Uh, reproductive isolating mechanism is the mountain range here, and it is keeping organisms from reproducing, but also these organisms, they evolve and they evolve differently, uh, so they become two different species through evolution too. So allopatric, there is a geographic boundary in there. Two new species evolve. Parapatric speciation, there's a continuous distribution. So this is all in one area. There are trees here, these monkeys prefer trees. There's a desert here, these monkeys prefer a desert. There's grassland here, these monkeys prefer grassland. They have totally continuous uh, distribution. 
but phenotypically they have different features in all of these different areas and those features are their reproductive isolating mechanisms so uh whether they're i mean really it's ecological reproductive isolating mechanism because they're choosing these different regions uh, but they're evolving based on those regions that they're in and they're acquiring new characteristics that keep us when we look at the fossil record from saying that they're the same species so these are important terms for you to know too. So there's a lot of memorizing in this information because it's a lot of terminology, um, but that, you know, it is what it is. That's what you have to learn in this segment of the course. So now we have to talk about how fast this happens. And this is a really important idea uh, because a lot of people think, you know, when I show the pictures of the birds, next generation, new bird. Or sometimes that bird turns into the other bird. That's not what happens. This is over a long period of time, but we have two different ways that we think evolution may happen and we don't actually know which one is more accurate. So gradualism is the way that I usually think of evolution. It's very slow and very steady and we have all of these intermediary um, phenotypes in between the fossils that we find. Because what, what causes this to be difficult to really know is, say we have a fossil of this horse and a fossil of this horse and a fossil of this horse we don't have any of the fossils of the blue horses that were sort of the in-between of these phenotypes that we see so gradualism says well those horses existed they were just not fossilized and this took you know a really long time and there were lots of intermediary phenotypes punctuated equilibrium from point a to point f or whatever same amount of time but rather than having all of these little blue intermediary horses, they say that it's just a rapid change that happens all at once, uh, and now there's a new species of horse. All at once, new species of horse. That species lives for a really long time, and then all at once, new species of horse. So we say it's short bursts of change in between these steps that are followed by long periods of stability where this species is found for an extended period of time. So this is punctuated by breaks, but the equilibrium is that, that period of stasis. Uh, so the argument for this is, again, we don't have these blue fossils, so maybe, we, maybe those blue fossils never existed uh, as living organisms. Maybe these are the only organisms that existed. Uh, so there are many people who argue for punctuated equilibrium. Uh, there are many people who argue for gradualism, but you do need to understand the difference and that both of them are, are pretty viable options. Okay, so that is the end of the PowerPoint that was originally posted in Blackboard, but there is still the smaller activity to follow. So that will be the fourth installment and it, that will go along with the worksheet that's posted in Blackboard. So move on to that.